welcome back to the shop once again. I hope everybody out there is doing well. Today I wanna to go over and rebuild with you the Ingersoll Rand IR 231 half inch <laughs> impact. Now you can hear this one sounds really strong still. It has served me well for 14 years of daily use but it's time to rebuild it. There is wear components inside of here. These generally do not break. You ask any mechanic out there, technician that's been in the industry, they know it's been a staple of the industry for 20, 30, maybe even 40 years. But they do wear out over time. Now this one, I could easily go out and buy an AirCat, a fancy version uh, of these half inch pneumatic impacts, but I've grown accustomed to this. My body is in tune to this impact. I can feather the throttle just right and get these uh, nuts and bolts started. I know when to let off based on the sound of the gun. I know this gun very well. I don't want to give it up. So I want to keep it as my main gun. And today we're going to take it apart and rebuild it. Now Ingersoll Rand does have a couple different rebuild kits depending on how far you want to go into it and what's worn and what's broken on it. So I'll link to everything down below for your reference on this particular gun. Let's go over to the bench and get started. All right, let's go ahead and put it into the vise facing up like this, and we'll take off the uh, twin hammer mechanism and the anvil and all that, get that out of the way. It basically splits into two on here. Now, I'm not going to lie, I did take this apart. I did rebuild it once already with the old components, so I know exactly what I'm talking about, and I don't mislead you guys. Um, so the one thing I did leave out uh, back here, is this little piece right here. I'll go over it towards the end. I want to put it back together, but that basically holds the button in place. So it doesn't fall off, okay, your trigger. So that's where that goes. We'll put those off to the side. And basically, you need a few basic components, uh, like a flathead screwdriver, basic tools, I mean, uh, five mil Allen, a pick to get in there, get some of these components out of there, and maybe a hammer to bust some of this stuff apart as it's pressed together. A good dead blow like this one right here. So we'll go ahead and we'll start taking out these three. Again, make sure it's facing up. This whole mechanism does stay together once you pull it off of there. So this is a five millimeter. And there are three of these. Okay, and they each have a lock washer and blue Loctite from the factory. So we'll be sure to put that back on going in here. Make that a bit tighter. There we go. Okay, so this mechanism right here simply lifts right up. And if you pick it up slow, it'll stay together. As you can see here, there's like a ring right here that holds the mechanism inside here. So we'll leave that like that, put it off to the side for now. And then there's a washer right here, okay. It's coming out of here, okay. And one side is flat and the other side has a bump up in the middle here. You can kind of see that. Um, you can kind of see it right there and the other side's flat right across. So just keep that in mind. The bump out does go down. If you are concerned, you don't know if which is which, you didn't catch that part of the video, whatever, um, there is witness marks in there. So you can just match up the witness marks to what's on there. So we'll go ahead off to the side. And then there's these little like compression rings that basically are seals um, that get compressed whenever you put the housing back together. So there's two of them together. Okay, I'll put those off to the side. And then there's this, uh, this mechanism right here that encapsulates uh, the veins inside of here and all that. So we'll go ahead and take that out next. So we'll get it out of the vise and we're going to simply tap on it with our hand, okay? And you can see it's starting to come out there. So we'll go ahead and pull this pin out, okay, right here, off to the side once again. And let me turn this around for you so you can see what I'm doing. And this simply comes out, okay? 
You can see the side faces down with all different passages for the air, okay, inside of here. And then this side simply is a bearing. So we'll go ahead and put that to the side. Now inside of here, these are the veins that actually go around and around and around. And as you can see, you spin it around real nice and fast and they go out and the air, the passage gets smaller as it goes around. It's kind of the same idea as any kind of pump out there, um, gyrotor style pump, stuff like that. So we'll go ahead. Now this part, we're gonna keep in there, okay? This, this center portion right here, we're gonna keep all that in there, okay? Generally, unless there's um, damage to this comp these components in here, you don't need to touch them, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna dump these veins out of here. Now you can spin it to each one like this and pull it out with the needle nose, you know, just like so, or you can just kind of dump it over and they'll come out too. Now if yours does come out just like this, mine uh, on here, okay, this is the whole cylinder that goes inside there again, this is the wear area. Um, the lettering on mine, Ingersoll Rand and all that, was facing up, okay? And that pin we took out later goes right through here and that locates it, so don't worry about that. Just make sure the lettering is up, okay? So put that to the side too, and here's those old, worn, dirty veins that are in there. Get those out of there. Now, like I said, you can take uh, this, this center portion here, it's getting nice and light now, and you just, you know, kneel nose these out of here, or grab them with your hand, and just kind of get them out of there, okay? And we get all the old components out of here. Now at this point, you know, just make sure that the insides are not full of grit and, and or destroyed uh, from foreign material getting inside of there, anything like that. You know, give it a good spin, okay? It should spin real nice just like this one. Okay, now if you want to remove this inner part right here to get to the gasket and stuff like that behind it, the only real way to take it out of there because it fits so precise in there is to heat the outside of the impact itself with like a propane torch or map torch nice and evenly on the outside get this to expand a little bit be careful it's gonna be hot and we can take this out then you can see it like that um that's the only way to get it out because it fits super tight down inside of there Okay, now on to the nose cone of the impact. Now for me, because I use mine for over 10 years every day for everything, I put it through a lot of abuse, um, I went into the nose cone on here and I figured I'd make sure nothing's broken and of course clean it up and renew the grease inside of there. Um, you may or may not want to get this far into it. It's totally optional. Um, usually the veins are what actually wears out on there, but again, I use this one so much uh, I'm sure it's in need of a great group greasing on there. So what I did is actually the hammer mechanism right here, the double hammer mechanism, it just kind of falls right out of there. It slips right out of there uh, from the backside here. And there's a gasket that goes around the outside. And then this goes on top of that. And it kind of holds it all together and holds this, makes it one unit with the mechanism. So what you got to do is just kind of pull this off the gasket off the new one is included in the kit and then of course that whole thing slides right out now when you're taking this apart you want to clean it up really well inside of there and what I found to work really well cleaning all these parts is the CRC brake clean because it's unlike a regular brake clean it's more of like a parts washer or solvent uh, so it works really well to clean the parts up and get all the dirt and grit out of there and then I coat the outside and the other parts on the internals with WD-40 so it works out really well just those two chemicals on there now when i'm going back together on here i am using the timkin wheel bearing grease the high temp high shear high pressure grease uh, so that's good for this kind of repair so i'm using that and we're just going to basically go back together at this point on here now i did go as far as pulling the double hammer mechanism apart and making sure nothing's damaged or worn inside of there. there's two pins right here you can see they slide right out and this whole thing will just fall apart. Um, so I went that far and I made sure I was cleaned up and re-greased. And at this point it can simply just drop back into there. So we'll do that. Get it back down inside of there. 
Nice and smooth, okay, we're good to go. Make sure these are down all the way. And then of course we're gonna use that new gasket on here. Just like so, okay. And then when you use this piece right here, it'll center that gasket. And what that gasket does, is it keeps grease and air and everything else. Um, and it seals the two halves of the impact. So this will center it in there. Okay, you just fall into there. This piece right here is a little uh, tight. It's like a press fit, but you can literally press it by hand, like you're seeing here. Just press it evenly. And like I said, that'll seal this part and it'll stick out a little bit. Uh, so it seals to the other part of the impact. So just make sure that goes all the way down. And this part, it's good to go. Now before going back together, you may want to make sure that everything on here is seated properly before bolting it up to the other half of the impact. So what you can use is a soft face hammer like this to kind of just tap that ring all the way around, make sure it's seated in there perfectly. And then it's good to go at that point. Now the one thing I can tell you is the hammer mechanism right here, the two pieces of it do go in there a certain way. So you want to keep this card that comes with the kit so you have a reference of just how it all goes back together on there. It's really useful going back together. Now these two, they do face different ways. Uh, so keep that in mind going back together and uh, put it together right so everything works in the end. Now next we're going to go through everything else in here is cleaned up and I'm ready to go. The next thing we're going to do because I'm going this far is I actually pulled the knob and the air selector lever right here off. Um, so I pulled all that out of there, just a screw in the side, the knob comes off, and this whole thing pulls right out. Now this right here I did not pull out, that's the that's like pressed inside of there. But there are O-rings inside of here that we're going to change out next. Uh, so they, you know, seal up the valve inside of there. So let's go over to the bench and check that out. Now if you're like me, uh, your impact is probably 10, 20, 30 years old and while you're in here you want to go ahead and renew it as far as possible. Now I did pull the guts out of here like I was talking about heating the outside of the housing, that, that uh, end plate and the rotor comes right out then and there's a gasket down in there, uh, the button flies right off. But the other thing is this air diverter valve back here inside the housing. Now the valve itself probably isn't worn too much, um, but there are O-rings inside it here. And this valve is used to control all the airflow forward and reverse, and of course how much. Uh, so you want to take it out while it's all apart and uh, change those O-rings out inside of there and inspect it of course. Now this thing has a 4 millimeter uh, screw right here that comes out on yours. And you might have to, you know, hold the knob on here while you're pulling this out because mine was actually Loctited in there uh, initially because it used to fall out back in the day. So I had I actually crushed this knob right here but it is available separately uh, so you can repair that. Now once that is off of there it simply pushes right out of there. And there's going to be some resistance but it's just the O-rings inside they're all dried up and crusty. So pull it out and once it's out just make sure it's not worn out too much. Uh, of course clean it up with some WD-40, make it like new again and then we can go inside of here and there's two O-rings and you're going to want to use a uh, curved angled uh, pick like this to get down inside of there. Now this one it's right here. It's just below the outside of this center piece in here that gets pressed into the housing. Whereas this side, it's down probably a quarter inch or so, okay? And it's going to be impossible to record inside there, but you get the general idea. What we're going to do is we're going to get down inside of here, we're going to get that O-ring, we're going to hook it, and we're going to pull it out. Now these O-rings, like I said, are, are included in the kit. So we can might as well put them in there if we're buying this kit. I think mine actually fell through in there. Oh, it's down in there a little further. There we go. Okay, so there it is. You see it comes out of there. And these are all hard and brittle. Um, so you might as well change them out once it's, well, it's all apart. And this one, like I said, if you want to practice on this one first, both coming out and going back in, might be a good idea because it's right here. 
so it'll come out much easier on there. Kind of hook it, boom, comes right out, see? So once they're out, go ahead and clean with some WD-40 compressed air. Make sure this housing is completely clean because so we're going to start the rebuilding process on here. Now going back together, you want to lubricate your two O-rings and I just use compressor or your air tool oil uh, to lube those up and get them all ready for reassembly here. Make sure they're good to go with oil on here. Now the way this works is it'll be impossible to get down inside there and put in perfectly. So what you want to do is start on this side, it's a little easier. And we're going to just push the O-ring inside of there. And it's going to be all mauled up and backwards and twisted up inside of there. Don't worry about it. As long as it gets inside the hole, it'll expand back out and poof back out perfectly. So we'll just get it down inside of there. Be very careful with a flat plate screwdriver like this and just make sure it falls into the groove and that's not twisted in the end. And there it is. It's a little hard doing it on the camera. You feel it's in there all the way around. Make sure it's not twisted and then you can go onto this side and this side's a little bit deeper uh, but the same idea applies. We're just going to push it into there and get it down in there going to be a little jacked up but we'll get it in there into the groove just try to not let it go past the groove since it's a little harder and then we'll simply push this side down and it'll kind of fall into the groove like that now going back together, what you want to do is of course make sure the O-rings are in there, they're not twisted, they're of course lubricated. We're going to start putting the valve back together and put this impact back together. So what I do is I'll push it into here and now just spin it a little bit like so. You see it going into there? And just go put it in nice and straight as we're pushing it through. You don't want to tear the O-ring on there. And it keeps dropping past. And the same thing for the other side. There it is. Now, what you want to do is pick a number on this side. And let's say 5. Okay? We're pointing towards 5, the highest setting on there. And then on the other side, we can line up that uh, the knob on here. Because the knob does have uh, two points on here that lock into um, the shaft on there to align it and then it has a mark on the knob. So with this one being around five on the other side, okay, right around there, that'd be correct on there. Now for me personally, I'm putting my blue Loctite back on here um, because I plan on using this thing a lot. I don't want it falling off on me. So we'll get it lined up on there. Nope, that's not it. In the groove basically line up with the five on there and we'll put this into there and get her tightened down just make sure it's still lined up on there as you're tightening this down now what you'll find is the valve is just gonna spin 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 like it should that means everything's good to go inside of there so what you want to do is hold the other side with a pliers and then just tighten this side down. Again, making sure it's still in that groove still uh, and lined up. Doesn't have to be too tight. Lock tight will do the rest. So it should feel nice and solid on there, okay? And you can feel the O-rings are doing their job and you should be able to spin it, of course, on here. Okay, now with the housing all cleaned up, our valve back in, new O-rings, we can go ahead and start building it from the ground up inside of here. Now, the first parts we're gonna need is the end plate, okay? And it looks different than the other one. They're close, uh, but this one's a little bit different, so make sure you have the right one. We're gonna need that. The new gasket, which of course comes in the kit. We're gonna need the rotor, and then we're gonna need the E-clip. 
So we're gonna reassemble the rotor to the end plate and we're gonna pop that gasket into there and start putting it back into there. Now remember, before putting this whole assembly back in, because it is such a tight fit, you're gonna find you wanna heat the outside of the gun with a map gas or a propane torch, just to heat it up and expand it just a little bit and it'll slide right into there, perfect. So let's go ahead and rebuild this right here. Now these are all cleaned up. You may want to soak uh, the bearing right here with the air tool oil. Actually, we'll do that right now. Just so it has some oil upon startup because we cleaned this out so well in here. And then we'll just spin that around a little bit and get it ready to go. Now this part does go down inside of there, so we're gonna go ahead and put this part through. Okay, and we're actually gonna put some of that oil on this side too. Just a little bit, so it's not dry. Okay, back together, much better. Now, this E-clip goes in the back side here, and you can simply press these right onto here. With the pliers, you just kind of pinch it and it'll snap right out of there. I'll try to show you guys how this looks. You simply snap back onto there, like so. Okay, so let's make sure it's on there, it's in the groove fully all the way around. Make sure they're not going to come apart. Spin it a little bit, and this part is ready to go. Let's go ahead and put this gasket down inside of the housing here. Uh, I just need to line up the alignment slot right here, and that's about it. So get it close, and then of course the pin will uh, finish it out on there. Now at this point, again, you want to heat the outside of the housing, and then we're going to slip this right back in. Now when you do put it in, you want to make sure when you're putting it back in, it's expanded, that we line up the slot down in the housing and the gasket all together at once. You might, might want to have that alignment pin on hand before this thing contracts back down. So it's all set, ready to go. Now you just wanna heat the housing enough on the outside with that torch, uh, just so it expands a little bit. You don't wanna smoke the O-rings and all that. Now this one should be good to go. Had enough time. And we can start putting this back in. Oh yeah, that is just falling into place now. So that's real nice. Look at that. That's a perfect install right there. So again, make sure the alignment uh, pin inside of there, that little hole right there, is lined up. So we'll get our pin for that, this one right here, and we'll just make sure it's good to go inside of there. Now the other nice thing is that, you know, once it is down inside of there and heated up, you can move it around and align it perfectly, uh, real easy. Now I have to admit, this housing right here, I did not pay attention to how it came out. Um, but if you look at it, the grooves right here and the air passages, and even the ones down here, they're symmetrical on both sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the stamped lettering up. And again, this just has the alignment tab right here, the hole for it, and you just use it to align it. And it'll all just kind of come together. I'll get some oil real quick. I'll we'll lubricate the insides where the veins are gonna go and the outside, sure. And then we'll just line up that hole on there. Look at that falls right in and that'll fully bottom out on the side of there at this point just give it a good spin make sure everything sounds okay and we're good to go at this point okay let's go over and get the veins and start sliding them into the slots uh, so we can build it up from here okay let's go ahead and put some more oil down inside of here just a few drops here and there it's all lubed up, and then we're gonna start installing the veins. Now these are gonna be lubricated also when they go in. 
So pre-lubricate yours. And then you just simply slide them in. And those kind of fall into place. At this point, everything should be turning ultra smooth, like this one is. It's gonna be like, like new when we're done here. That's gonna be great. I love this gun. It's been through a lot with me. Okay, so there we go, we're ready to go. Let's see how it all works inside of there once you spin it fast enough. Let's go ahead and put the end plate on here and put the other half on. Now this plate right here simply plops down on top of there. Of course, line it up with the locking tab, the locking pin in there. It just kind of falls into place. Good to go. Let's put that oil in these bearings once again because we clean them out so well. There we go. Now again, this washer has a step to it. You can see it right here. And that step faces the bearing. And the way I figured that out, because I did fall out and I didn't pay attention, was the wear pattern right here. You see the wear pattern? It matches the other side of the gun. Uh, so that all makes sense because the inner part here is a little recessed uh, compared to the outer race on here. There we go. Let's go ahead and put our trigger back into here. Falls right back into place. Okay, we're getting close. Now the next thing we need to do is put this Belleville washer set, the spring washer set in here. And it goes in just like this, double stacked, right into place, okay. And then at this point, we can go ahead and put our housing back onto here. So go ahead and just put it back onto there. Let it spline up. There we go. And it should kind of fall into place. Now this only goes on there one way. Uh, these two ears are smaller than this one, so just get it all lined up on there. And then we can go ahead and start screwing it back together. Now going back together, same thing as the other bolts on here, you want to use blue Loctite. So I'll put a little bit of that onto there. And these do include a lock washer, uh, but they're not included in the kit, so they kind of wear out over time. So we'll get these started by hand, get everything all lined up. Same thing with the other side. A little Loctite, never hurt anybody. There you go, you can see much better that way. Now this other one over here uh, by the button, the trigger, this one is actually held in place with this additional bracket right here. So. Kind of goes into here, like so. And you drop it into there. And that way it can't fly off of there. A little Loctite. And we'll get these tightened down. Again, you want to do all this by hand, and I suggest you do them evenly uh, so we can compress that Belleville washer inside of there, uh, you know, evenly. Nothing gets cocked in there that way. Now, of course, before you run it in for the first time, let's put some oil inside of there and lubricate it properly. Put a little bit extra in there, and it'll work its way out. Okay, now the first thing you want to do is connect the air up on there and listen for some air leaks. Okay, good to go, no air leaks. So we'll put it in reverse first. <coughs> Sounds so good. And then we'll try forward. <coughs> and then of course you wanna adjust your air. <coughs> wow. 
like new once again. I'm so excited this is back together. This is my go-to, this is my baby, and it's back once again.